Today I want to get heavily geared towards longer poses. We're going to start to make that transition into the painterly aspect of drawing. So let's do our best to um, try to identify our landmarks underneath, certainly our center lines. There's going to be some information that's uh, completely hidden, but it's still our job to um, account for it, be aware of it. And if we're not sure, then start to investigate and try our hand at it. Okay. For example, the, the two front corners of the pelvis and the tilt. There is some information. The, the fabric is somewhat sheer, so we can kind of see through a little bit. We can get a, information about where the waistline is. We're going to use that to our advantage and uh, try to introduce that in order to uh, assess where the two front corners of the pelvis are. Okay. And then after uh, we've kind of covered all our bases, uh, then I think uh, we can address the fabric and the kind of uh, the folds being created by uh, gravity, which are um, completely vertical, and then other folds that are created by points of tension. So we want to ask ourselves: Is she is she tilting? Is she tilting towards us, or is her upper body tilting towards us, away from us, um, and so forth? And try to try to represent that with a nice, simple barrel idea for the rib cage. Use utilizing the pit of the neck, which is very clearly identifiable. Also, the cylindrical nature of the neck moving towards us towards the top, and then we have a lot of information to start with. We have this uh, distribution of weight on the right hand. And the hand in proximity to the foot in relationship to the other foot on the ground plane. This nice graphic V shape, always using the fabric to draw around and over the form. Uh, the, the, the fabric in this case should just serve the purpose to help describe what's going on underneath as best we can. So we don't want to put information down that information in the folds that disproves the form. We want to put information down that reinforces the form as best we can. Um, I guess what that, what that means uh, to me is that sometimes we can see uh, folds in the drapery and so forth that, uh, that work against the sense of volume, for example, if I see a U-shaped fold right here, that's not, that's not proving 
the cylindrical nature of the upper thigh. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the, the folds as they work themselves around and prove the cylindrical nature of the upper leg in this area, for example. First and foremost, before uh, going for that U shape that I'm seeing, but that U shape does help um, uh, to some degree create a sense of drag or, or sense of gravity. So, um, uh, but I think that the priority first is a sense of form underneath the fabric and then the uh, sense of drapery um, on top of the form after the fact, after we're able to represent uh, the basic components of the form underneath the drapery. Same for what's going on around the arm. Definitely going to be drawing around the arm, uh, circumnavigating that form first before looking for the folds as they're perceived as observationally. Uh, so in this case, I mean, for a painting, you know, obviously um, we're not necessarily going to be uh, working in a manner where we're using a linear idea to map things out. So if you see a pose like this, it's graphic. We can minimize the amount of uh, linear approach um, and uh, concentrate on the big graphic idea, although uh, you can see that it's still extremely important to be aware of the construction um, in terms of identifying the major direction that the torso and that the, the three movable masses are oriented. Shape doesn't allow us to uh, um, overlook form. So I would do a light idea first, and then maybe we can utilize shape and think a little bit more in terms of the envelope idea. So it's not a bad idea to um, start to consider shape as a tool, as a primary tool of um, helping and serve to identify and represent form. Uh, and, and obviously uh, represent light, but it's always, uh, it's always looming how does a shape of value or shadow emphasize form. And, it's, and so that it doesn't just become a flat, uh, non-descriptive component. I mean, shape inherently is a flat idea. It's two-dimensional. Um, but use it, uh, used effectively, shape can really uh, start to convey form. And that's what we're going to be concentrating on from here on out, primarily. I would be questioning what is it I am actually focusing on. Is it rhythm? Is it construction? Is it shape and value? Because all of these things are, are necessary to work in concert to be effective. And so if you're focusing on one thing, for example, like shape um, and design of shadow and light, um, you might be sacrificing another. And we want to do our best to juggle a few things at, at, you know, at one time, but 
you know, be reasonable, give yourself, give yourself some leeway to concentrate on that one thing and try to really convey it effectively and get into a rhythm and uh, that can be a, a productive way to spend spend the day focusing on that particular fundamental. So, um, so I'm trying to juggle a few things here and just so and just kind of get opened up and not. Um, not worry too much and just try to let my mind uh, just just get loose. But I mean, sometimes, um, I mean, some of the other drawings were a little more about uh, the rhythm of the gesture and the, the form underneath. And then other things started to get a little bit more shape oriented and shadow pattern oriented. And, um, and you know, ultimately just trying to find a rhythm here. There is a lot of value in online art education. We have so much great instruction on NMA that is so easily accessible. Even when I was in school learning to draw and paint, nothing was online. Wherever you are in the world, you can get this instruction. And not only can you watch these lessons that are so valuable and so in-depth and so passionately instructed, but you can watch them again and again and again.